What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we're playing a champion that honestly is a hell of a lot of fun. She is, uh, you know, one of those champions that you meet every now and then and somebody just completely smashes you out of the ballpark. She's amazing, she's really fun to play and she's actually been pretty highly requested on the champion or, or on the channel um, because... Ethan G, Rachel Buchan, and Dylan Niga, I don't know how to pronounce that, Joshua, George, Jebeli Fetty, Ak, Nicola Ward, Joe Grain, and Joshua all requested a video on this champion. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy this one. Today we are, of course, playing Diana. And yeah, honestly, Diana is, uh, she's a ton of fun to play. First of all, let's get one thing out of the way. Throughout the video, I won't be going too much into details with any of the runes. Instead, what I've done is I've left a link down below in the description directly to MOBA Analytics, where they show the current best runes for the champion and also which items you should buy. For those of you interested, I've also left a link on downloading the application. I can strongly recommend this. I've actually started using it myself. I really do enjoy it. What this thing can do is that it just allows you to import the runes directly into League of Legends when you're in Champions League, such that you don't have to sit and click everything, which is honestly just such a nice thing to have. And yeah, if any of you guys then start using this app and are like, yo, I really like this. I want to have the premium feature. The premium feature gives you some extra analytics and stuff that can help you exceed your gameplay. Then use my code down below in the description to get a 10% off. And also, this is a small way of extra to uh, to help our channel grow a little bit. Anyway, uh, all of that for that plug. I really do hope you guys are going to enjoy that one. I personally really like that application. It makes makes it a lot easier whenever you're trying out new... Uh, yeah new champions because you can just directly import the newest runes all right so the agenda for this video as you guys know then what we always do is first of all we talk a little bit about just generally who this champion is for skill wise and kind of what you can expect when playing this champion uh afterwards we're going to talk a little bit about how the different abilities work we're going to go into the very detail of them so you guys know exactly uh what like kind of what to expect oh I guess I'll take that kill, thank you. Hello. Thank you. That was very nice of you. That was very nice. <laughs> all right. Uh, but as I was saying, first of all, we could talk a little bit about who this champion's for, then go into the, the very detail of each ability so you guys know exactly what you can... Oh, come on, dude. Really? Exactly what you can expect when playing... Oh. What you can expect when playing this champion um and yeah and then we're going to talk a little bit about the combos how they work and how everything works together as you now understand the the very detail of every spell and then lastly we're going to talk about the game strategy that you want to have on this champion how you want to play it um this is kind of a weird champion uh this is kind of a weird champion that i guess like personally i think i would consider her to be Kind of an assassin but not really and i'll get more into that later why i perceive this champion is kind of an assassin and i think it's the only category that somewhat fits her but also the reason why she's not really but we'll we'll talk more about that later uh, i think we'll actually sell this and we'll wait for a control ward for five seconds here all right there we go all right so first of all, let's talk a little bit about who this champion is for. So this champion is probably, as you guys know, I don't really like recommending uh, melee champions if you're completely new to the game, meaning that you've never ever played a game of League of Legends in your entire life. Then starting out with a melee champion in the mid lane, in my opinion, is fairly difficult. Like it, it's 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 a steep learning curve just because most other mid laners or, or the majority of mid laners are ranged champions, meaning that you're going to get poked a lot and you might never really get the oh, the chance to get into the game. Thank you. I don't know if I kill, kill steal that one, but thank you. <laughs> That's very kind of you, sir. Come on, jump here. I'm a little, a little bit afraid of that turret, though. 
back out. Um, but yeah, it's not a champion. Like, if this is the champion that want, makes you want to play the game, of course, go for it. If you just have some experience with League of Legends, played a couple of games, and like kind of have a feel of farming and everything, then this is a great champion for you. This, she's really fun. She becomes really, really strong. But learning how like the game strategy is something that what we're going to talk about at the end of the video is really going to help you out because she is kind of a strange one. Uh, she really, really is. Whoop. Spang out that one. Let's just take our good time here. All right. So all that aside, let's start talking a little bit about the abilities, how they actually work, and how uh, you want to use these things. So our very first ability is called Moon Silver Blade, and of course, this is the blade that Diana runs around with. That looks freaking awesome. Um. Oh, let me get out of here. No, bro. Oh, he, I didn't see her level six. My bad. That was terrible. All right. So, yeah, as I've said before, whenever we are doing these videos, the primary purpose is not to show you guys perfect gameplay. It's kind of to showcase things, have kind of a fun game and make it more entertaining to learn these stuff along the way. All right. So first ability, Moon Silver Blade. This one's freaking awesome. What this thing can do is, first of all, it gives Diana some passive attack speed, meaning that she attacks with her weapon uh, faster. And this is dependent on level. At the max level, she gets 40% attack speed from her passive. Super neat. Very good. Additionally, what this thing can do is that whenever Diana casts a spell, then this passive attack speed is tripled for a short duration. Uh, so it's, it's tripled for, I think it's 2.5 seconds. But usually... Yeah, yeah, you get the point. It it increases it significantly, making you wow. And just my Diana literally just bucked out. All right, this is uh I'm probably gonna be dead here. When I say probably, I mean definitely. All right, let's get this. Let's go back into lane. All right. So that's kind of the first part of your passive get attack speed whenever you cast an ability triple that attack speed being f or being very awesome <laughs> um your next thing in your passive is that every time or for every third attack or how do you pronounce how do you say it in a nice way every time diana attacks the third time or th every third basic attack is empowered on diana meaning that 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 attack is going to start uh, or it's going to deal AoE damage stacking with your ability power, meaning that it deals a chunk of bonus damage. You can see it right here by the fact that we're kind of glowing. So let's see if we can stack that up. And you can see we have it here. We're glowing and we do AoE damage and also hit this guy, which is it's, it's really, really freaking good. So the way you want to use this in the laning phase or just in general, whenever you want to burst someone, then it can be really good to stack this thing up first. Now it's ready and then go for your initiate. Don't go for it uh before you have any stacks up because this really gives you a tremendous amount of burst like this is this thing is gonna make the difference between you killing somebody and him killing you which is yeah all right so that's your passive that's all it does it's a really nice one our next ability is called crimson strike and i think this is one of the abilities like animation or look wise that is probably one of the most ooh most um iconic spells i think we're gonna go oh are we gonna are we actually gonna go full in for this i don't think so i feel like this is not not looking too good for us okay so people are not backing up and i'm not gonna go in there one more than we three uh but crimson strike is pretty cool because what this thing can do is that diana casts this moonlight in an arc arc like um manner i guess or fashion so whenever you cast this you can see it deals a good chunk of damage it's actually significant amount of damage and then it puts this this effect onto them that you can see basically this light glowing on you on the targets that you hit uh this is what is called moonlight the moonlight not only deals damage or it deals damage when you hit the with the ability but the moonlight here reveals the target such that you can jump to it that if you jump to a target that has this moonlight effect onto it, then what's going to happen is basically that 
that your E is going to be fully reset. Like, honestly, doesn't feel like you never used it, which is freaking cool. I have no clue if we can kill this. Okay, probably should be able to. I don't know why he attacked this. He was a little six. I just noticed no chance he would win. <laughs> All right. So that's kind of what your Q can do. It's it's very simple. Puts this, uh, it shoots this arc out, dealing damage to anything in its way, and puts the moonlight effect on it. And the moonlight effect allows you to jump to that target, resetting your E completely. So basically, you can use your E twice in a row, which is super nice. You can also hold, just hold on to your E for a longer time. Um, so there are, there are different mechanics for this. I will talk a little bit, a little bit more about that one as we get in. Oh, this guy really wants to go for an all in. Yeah, she's slippery. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how this actually comes together when we talk about the E, because without really knowing what the E does, it kind of makes a, doesn't make that much sense. I hope I hope I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, wow. This guy really, really, really wants to gank him. I don't know if that's a good choice, but that was a complete waste of flash. All right, let's push this. Actually, one of the things that Diana is really good at, oh, we'll talk more about that with the, oh my God, are you kidding me? I don't know what you're doing, buddy. Go away from me. No. You can stop that. Ooh. I'm a little afraid here. She jumps over there and she's screwed. If I can. I'm a little. F Maybe I should have backed off, but I'm pretty sure I would have been dead if I did. Okay. Let's back out, use our gold, and talk about the next ability. Our next ability is called Pale Cascade. And Pale Cascade is honestly a really, really important part off with diana and it, it's actually the ability you want to max as your second ability the reason for this is that that it deals a really good chunk of damage and it also helps you sustain throughout a fight so what your pale cascade can do is basically that it puts these three spheres or orbs sphering around you so you see them right here and as you guys see the second we popped it on ourselves we got a tiny little bit of shield, which is honestly super good. So that's the first takeaway. You get some shield whenever you pop your W. Additionally, if your orbs hit a target, then it deals a good chunk of damage per sphere or per orb hitting your target. So ideally, you want to make all three orbs hit say, or hit uh, your enemies because that way you deal the most damage. Whenever all of your spheres detonate or they damage an enemy then basically what what happens is that that you're you get the shield once again uh i know this sounds kind of weird but when you click the shield the, the orbs then you get a shield and when it detonates then you also get a shield and these two actually stack so ideally you want to make sure that oh i think we need to we need to uh rotate bot stuff is gonna go down down here i cannot just sit a blindfolded in the mid lane Pretty sure that they're looking for something down here. It feels cheesy. Feels a little bit cheesy. Yep, she's there. I'm here. I'm here, buddy. Nope. Nope. Feels bad. I feel like they have that one. All right, let's go run back into lane. All right, so short summary of your W. Your W, you, as you can see, pop it, and we get some shield. Then detonate it. And we get another shield that stacks with the first one. So it's really, really, it's honestly just really insane. It deals with a really heavy load of damage. So something you do want to use uh, both for damage and for sustain, which is, it, it's just, it's an awesome ability, to be honest. Highly underrated. Uh, I think, I think newer players too. Diana is probably going to underrate this ability and they probably want to stack their E because they're like, that's my jump. But stacking your W is actually better. All right, so that's all your W does. It's a super fun ability. Our next ability is our E and probably Diana's most known ability. This used to be her old, but then they reworked her. And now her old is just like her old E, but better. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> okay, so 
your E is called Lunar Rush. And Lunar Rush is, uh, I guess, I guess it kind of means Moonlight Rush or something like that. Because Lunar, I think that means Moon. Uh, but what's pretty cool about this one is that Diana just dashes to her target, dealing a good chunk of damage. Honestly, that's kind of all that thing can do. Um, she can, however, use abilities while she's in the jump. So you can like, keep, if you jump to a target, I'm a little afraid of doing it here because I know their jungle is just underneath us. But if you do jump to a target, let's see if we can jump to the back minions here. Then you can pop something. At, okay, we don't have our abilities ready. Good job, Mips. <laughs> okay. Um, but basically, you can cast your abilities while jumping to a target. So... I really want to jump in her, but I really do not know where their uh, their jungler is. Which is super annoying, because he's been in here like a billion times. And we should we should actually look for roaming, because one of the things that Diana... Yeah, he's right here. Of course, he's always right here. One of the things that Diana is really good at is roaming and surprising her enemies, which is... Yeah. Alright, let's get some damage into that guy. Oh, okay, Katarina's down here. So I could actually have all in, but I was a little afraid because it did not know. Did not know where she is. Ooh. I have my the reason why I'm not using my E right now is because I want to make sure that I get the uh No! So much fail in one play. <laughs> okay, let's run back off. Alright. So as we were talking about, or Lunar Rush, all this thing can do is jump to a target, deal some damage. And as we talked a little bit about earlier, if that target has Moonlight on them, then this ability is instantly refreshed, like so. Super nice. This means that if you were, like if you need to jump several times, then you can actually, then you can actually use your Q, jump to a target, and you can jump again. But then, then your E is going to go on cooldown, which is of course going to be ideal for an all-in. But if you are looking to do more jumps pretty soon, then use your Q, jump to a target with your E, hold on to it for the, the cooldown while your Q is on cooldown, then you can do the same thing once again. So if you can kill a target without uh, without using your double E or your E two times, <laughs> then that's also a really nice thing to keep in mind because it's going to allow you uh, to kind of uh, jump between targets more often. All right. Uh, also, when you are getting chased down, remember that you can jump over walls like so. Like, we can uh, take this, jump over here. They're now going to be struggling to get away from us. We have three seconds, two seconds, one second. Going to go here. Going to use our ult. Should be really strong. We should be able to get this guy down pretty fast. Did not really enjoy. I want to run the other way to get help, but that didn't go so well. <laughs> but I guess you kind of get the point. Uh, so, if you don't have to use your... Uh, your E twice, then don't. This case, uh, this guy got a lot of shield, uh, which kind of made him survive for, for a little while, or the, uh, the Kaisa because of our old. But I guess you guys kind of got the point of what I ex what I explicitly meant with this ability. All right, so that's your Luna Rush. Our last ability is our old, and our old is called Moonfall. And as you guys kind of can hear from this, uh, this guide or the, the names of all of these abilities, is that they all kind of... Like, she's like kind of a moon queen thingy. I don't know what moon god is. I don't know. If somebody knows exactly the lore of Diana, feel free to tell me in the comments below. I would actually love to know. Uh, but she is kind of... Yeah, she does moon stuff. Uh, her moonfall, what this thing does is that it, uh, it... it Just like her old E, for those of you who know that she got reworked, it kind of drags people in, which is pretty cool. So whenever Diana casts her Moonfall, it drags any enemy within this circle uh, close to her. This is this works very well together with your with your W because it's gonna make sure that you proc all of the orbs from your shield. That aside, your Moonfall drags people in, and it also gives them or it also slows them by up to sixty percent, which is honestly very 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 good. Uh, after a brief moment, then what happens is that this Moonfall is going to deal a chunk of damage. This damage is based on how many champions were inside the first drag. So, I know that sounds kind of weird, but let's 
uh, I don't remember the exact if there's a yeah after one second I, I was kind of in doubt of how long it was 0.75 or one second but it's after one second the damage actually gets out there but the way it works is that when you click it the first time it drags anything into or close to Diana instantly and then after this one second it deals the damage but the the way that the damage gets chosen is based on the, the drag in animation or how many so imagine let's let's say that that we have four four people right here let's say this is four people then if you oh uh let's say this is four people if i drag the, those guys in with my old and then i jump straight to let's say that our back line that was not inside this if he's right over there so i use my old here then i jump over here to this guy and as this one second has passed it deals the damage then i'll actually deal damage as if there was four people inside it meaning that this is actually the way you want to burst people down if you can then you want to try and use your old such that you use it when there are the most people close to you and then jump to your target this is also one of the reasons why hextech proto belt is so freaking good because it's gonna allow you to have a longer range I'm a little bit in doubt of whether or not I can beat this guy in one on one. She is unfortunately pretty strong. Strong. Whoop. You can see right there is the one second. Oh, I think we're just gonna get. It. Oh wait, that's the teammate. Awkward. All right, there we go. All right, I'll see if I can get to show exactly how this damage on the moonfall works. But I hope it kind of makes sense. You drag people in when you are dragging people in then that's what decides how much damage you deal. Because you deal more damage the more people that are inside your moonfall. And then as the damage falls down, it... Yeah. I hope it kind of makes sense. I'll, I'll try and see if I can show... Actually, our base is really dying, which is freaking awkward. But we'll go back. All right, let's try and focus on actually uh, seeing if we can bring this home. Because things are not going too well. All right, let's run up here. I'm a pretty unsure if we can beat this guy. Should be able to deal at least a good chunk of damage. Ooh. All right. That was really painful. Ouch. How fed is that guy? Not even fed. All right. Fair enough. It's not even that bad. 143, 422. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I feel like that's what we need to talk about, the, the old. Like, I'll try and show you guys a little bit better, but basically, when you click the old, you can see it does this, and then it, afterwards, as it drags it in, after one second, it's going to do this, this basic damage down. Yeah, that crashes down. Um, I think I might put a clip in exactly how this works from, uh, from the training tool, just so you guys have a great a better understanding of that one but let's proceed and talk a little bit about how you actually want to play this champion so in oh no in the early uh game then of course what you want to do is you want to try and see if uh if you can win your lane if you are countered or having a hard time then don't struggle too much on all inning somebody that's too risky then instead what you can do is that you can can uh, can roam like Diana is ama an, an absolute amazing roamer. So the thing is that she can basically one shot somebody in a split second. And since her E is first of all on such a short cooldown, but also gets reset, then fairly often she can execute or uh, assassinate somebody basically more or less every 10 seconds. In the early game, you might need your ult for it. But what you want to try to do instead is try and push or shove your lane and then start roaming you can also shove your lane run run down back and maybe hide in a bush here wait for them to go down because they think you're gonna gank bot lane and as they go here you pop your q uh and you just go all in on them and that way you can get some really nice oh what you get some really nice initiates on uh on people which is oh this is awkward gotta get out of your yeah that was really painful Yep, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the free kill. Really needed it. The issue right here is this guy. He's, I don't think I'm in any position to beat him at all. 
And my team doesn't seem to care too much about him. <laughs> Which makes it worse. All right, so in the early game, personally, as soon as you get a lead as well, don't just sit in your own, own lane. Try and roam. Diana is an amazing roamer. She has short cooldown on her abilities, making her just like... She's, she's just such a strong champion. The thing is, as you're going through the late game, she becomes a really, really hard champion. The reason for this is that she's kind of weird in a way because she's an assassin, but not really. The way you want to play Diana in the late game is, of course, you can split push. She's not the absolute best split pusher in any way because she doesn't have that many tools to get away. Of course, she can jump over edges like this, but in general, she's not the best split pusher, but she has good split pushing power. If I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's because she can push turrets fairly quickly uh, because of her damage and also because of her uh, her passive, as we talked about, this third strike that deals a, a huge amount of damage. But more or less, what you want to look for is you want to look for picks. You want to look for people being out of position or rotating maybe between the bot lane and the mid lane. Make sure you have your vision up and just try and kind of find an angle on somebody and, and pick them off from the crowd. That way, putting your team in an advanced situation and then be able to help your team out. If you do have to always go in for these team fights, then going for something like an hourglass is going to help you out so freaking much. Like, honestly, that's what you want to... Okay. Who's... Oh, God. All right. So right now, our team is just getting picked up. Ooh. No, 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 no. Can drag this up. I need to get out of this. Oh, there's no way out. No way out. They're super tanky. Camille's there. Sen is there. I, I feel like this is going to be a rough game to win, to be honest. Going to be fair. But yeah, if you are going to go for a lot of team fights, then what you kind of want to do is you want to, if you can, see if you can assassinate their squishies, their backliners. Because um, you will be able to instantly kill them. Use your Hextech Pro Bell to get close. And then use the Hourglass as soon as you're out of your burst. If you're able to hold on to your E, that's also nice. If you if you can kill somebody with just Q, E, uh, W, and ult, then that's super nice. If not, then use your, your second E as well. And then use your hourglass while the cooldown is going on. So that's going to give you a brief moment to recap and get some abilities, get your shield back. And that should allow you uh, to hopefully maintain a bit throughout the fight. And also making you a huge pressure thing. Because you already took out probably one of their backliners with your burst. Now people are waiting for you to get out of your hourglass while your team is pressuring them. So hopefully that's kind of what you want to be looking for. So what you want to do in the early mid game is you want to roam as much as you can. You want to look for picks, meaning you have good vision out. Try and, and kind of catch people rotating between uh, objectives and lanes. Especially look for their squishies. Pretty often, especially at lower elos, you will see people being out of position or having a bad rotation path where they have no vision, they have no clue where you are. Like, even imagine that you have a mid laner here, and what he does is basically that he runs up here to gang. Afterwards, he runs back this way. You can actually just hide in this bush and uh, instantly kill them. So, think about just doing this these kind of like a bit cheesy plays where you're hiding random places and you're doing stuff that, that people are like oh god really that's kind of the what you want to go for with diana she's the like really <laughs> champion and she's a great roamer as well i don't really know why we're back here but sure um so that's kind of her early and mid game late game you want to kind of keep the same thing going but you can also start you start split pushing and then start picking people up if you have to team fight. Try and see if you get yourself an hourglass. Really gonna help you out a lot, I promise you. And then try to, to go for the squishies if possible. Otherwise, deal some damage on the front line using your Q, maybe a W in your E, but hopefully you don't have to use your E twice, putting on a cooldown. Uh, oh, we could probably do this. Oh, this is so painful. Ah, that felt bad. All right, so we now have a Libra. There's... The pro oh, he, he got back. Yes. <laughs> he just gets back in time to lose. 
Uh, but yeah, for the general combos, they're pretty straightforward on Diana. What you want to do is you always want to hit with your Q first. Uh, your what's it called Crimson Strike. Uh, you always want to hit this first, such that you can use the free jump without getting your Eon cooldown. The second you jump to your target, you want to pop your W, getting your seals up. This means that you're now close to your target and the orbs are going to hit your enemies, both giving you the, uh, the, the first shield from pop popping your ability and the second shield for destroying your orbs. Um, also, you can also use your, your, in this case, like basically what I would do is use Q, E, W, and then ult them such that you're sure that they get dragged into your orbs if they haven't already destroyed them. And then you can use your E once again. Uh, also, this means that you, you kind of have a feeling of whether or not you need to use your E the second time or not. All right, let's go back, back, back down here. I'm going to try and see if I can find a path where we can... There we go. Sweet. All right, so that's a free trade. There's actually a slight chance that we'll win this. All right, so right here, I, I'm pretty sure that's the... If she pops for ult, yep, there it is. We're kind of waiting for that one to end. This is not the best play at all. Ooh, I'm gonna run. Thank you. I am pretty low here, so we kind of need to think. I want to help out if I can. Can at least cast this backwards. Wow, these things just keep spawning. There we go. My health is slowly going up, so I think we might be able to help out. I'm at least going to bait him to me. All right, here we're just going to make sure that we do everything we can to him. But we don't have enough damage. <laughs> All right, so right here, this is going to be a nice back for us because we are going to be able to get our hourglass. But yeah, also remember that your Q reveals targets if you don't have any wards and you're like, I think somebody's hiding in a bush. And make sure that you use your ward uh, or you use your thing to... I don't think this is going to give us enough, no. Uh, make sure you use your Q to check bushes. This is a very nice way. Instead of just running into a bush, you can cast your Q to check if somebody is in there. I'm not going to use my ult here because I don't think we need it. I don't see any point in it. There we go. Let's get this. And just start pushing. I think there is actually a slight chance that we're going to come back into this. Especially if I start focusing up. Let's see. How much ability pot or uh, magic resist do they have? They don't really have that much. This guy is pretty tough to take down. This one is just by nature hard to take down. But he actually has no magic resist whatsoever. They have one guy with magic resist. Okay. Uh, Camilla's just going all in here. I am going to try and see if I can help her. Oh, this... I should have used my hourglass there. That was terrible. Wrong key. I have it. I usually always put it on my two key. And for some reason, I forgot to move it. <laughs> that was awkward. All right. But that's kind of the base idea of Diana. Like, you kind of want to try and always look for the squishies. If you're unable to, then try and think about how to do to damage people in more or less a safe way until you get an option to get there. Or maybe imagine their squishies are here. Here. And maybe you can use your Q, E to get over here and you can get around them or something silly. Like, there are a lot of cool plays on Diana that you can do. But her overall kit is fairly simple. It's more the nature of how to play her that's a little bit odd. She is closer to an assassin than anything else. But assassins by nature usually have better tools uh, to close the gap between them and the squishies. While Diana's is very... Diana's kit is very, what do you say, predictable, but it's also very, very strong. But yeah, as we talked about earlier, with your ult, if you want the optimal damage for it, then you want to hit more than one target with your... Oh, we'll see if we can help this guy a little bit. There we go. Nice. We should go get Baron now. Let's go for that one. This is a really long game, actually. 
All right, 41 seconds on Smite, but they don't, they only have Kai'Sa, so I guess it should be fine. I'll put this up here. If she goes to us, then I'll just jump over and I'll basically just, uh, yeah, hopefully kill her extremely fast. I should be able to. This should be a free Baron for us without a freaking doubt. There we go. Nice. All right, let's get this. But yeah, Diana, especially if, if she's on a roll, then she's just an amazing champion. There is also a kind of a cool build that you can go for that I, I would recommend this for anyone playing at least, I guess, below gold. And that's Rod of Ages build. Uh, the reason for this is that most of your games are going to last longer. They're going to be at least the length of this game. And what this means that you're going to get the full value of the Rod of Ages since it stacks over time or up to 10 minutes, which is just honestly extremely good on, uh, oops, sell this, get this with us, um, which is honestly just extremely good on Diana. Like it, it becomes so strong. The reason why this, like this build is still good, not saying that it's not, but because the product build value is extremely good, but stat wise, you're going to get more from the rut of ages and especially on lower ratings, it's, it can help you carry. Uh, but it's just a suggestion. It's not like you have to do this. It's just know that it's a good option to have and think about. All right. But yeah, you with Diana, you, of course, have a lot of mobility because you can do your E. You can do your flash and you can uh, you can use your QE to uh, jump to target. So proto build, you could do like like a, a flash proto build Q E to your target. And that way you can actually I guess you could basically hit somebody like up here in about a split second without him being able to do anything. Uh, we'll see if we can do kind of a trick like that one on somebody. But again, everything is going to feel a little bit forced if we do it here. Let's see if we can do the, the old trick. So we want to make sure that these guys are more or less gathered together. and want to flash up here, deal the most amount of damage to this guy and just get down their uh, Katarina's appearing to be one of their strongest if not the very strongest player so yeah as i told you guys earlier you want to make sure that you pop your your old then as uh, or you pop your old well while you have as many enemy champions inside the ring as possible drags them in and then you jump to the target you actually want to burst uh this way you deal the most damage of course if he's also stacking on top of that guy or on in that group you just stay there and wait for the damage to uh to hit him right in the face all right so it seems like we are actually going to be able to turn this around to a win like diana is not the very very best late game champion people on lower elos don't really know how to play against her and she's not a bad late game champion at all so don't really underestimate her she is she is super strong and she's really, really fun to play. She's a uh, great both mid and uh, and jungler. So yeah, GG's. We actually managed to turn this around despite everything. Uh, it was a pretty fun game. But as I've told you guys before, these games are not to show you guys the best, or the most amazing gameplay. They're made to kind of teach you guys a little bit about the champions and also kind of be entertaining so you guys don't feel like uh, you have to sit there and study and do homework that it kind of more feels fluent and fun and yeah i hope that i managed to kind of deliver that uh diana is an amazing champion and she's really fun to play i can highly recommend her she can also teach you a lot about roaming roaming is a very essential part of playing mid laner and this this champion really shows if if you if you're good at roaming or if you get good at roaming um then she can just snowball out of this world like she can be an absolute beast if she gets a couple of head kills ahead in the early game then most likely you'll be able to beat the other team 1v5 almost um just by the nature of her very short cooldown so yeah it's a very good thing to uh, to think about. She's a very fun champion. So I hope this video was kind of able to help some of you guys out. And I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, I can strongly recommend using the mobile analytics app to always have the newest runes uh, up to date. And if you like its features, use the premium and use my 10% off discount code down below. Uh, but yeah, it's just... I, I, I've personally used this app for 
the last two weeks to test it out and i actually really like it and i've started to use it on a regular basis because it just makes things easier even though i know the runes i know what i should use it's just really nice that i can go in there and can be like boom i don't have to uh, have 100 rune pages ready i can just import them directly into the game and it completely complies with uh riot's uh, terms of service and everything so there's nothing to worry about it's just super legit super good and uh yeah i really enjoy it anyway as i was saying um yeah i hope this guy video was able to help you guys out if it did in any way and make sure to smash that like button and if you have a champion that you would like to like me to do a video on and you would like to see then pop it down in the comment section below uh, and just yeah kind of tell me which champion you really would like to see a video on and if you have any other input or something you want to tell me also tell me down below um but yeah it's, that's more or less i think it if it, oh yeah one thing like 98 percent of you guys still not subscribed go ahead and click that subscribe button button join the meepster squad it's been amazing i've been seeing so many people joining onto the youtube membership program people joining in on discord it's just so amazing thank you guys so much for the support make sure to join in on the mips to squad and then uh, yeah just click the subscribe button but that is going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed it as always stay awesome have fun and take it easy guys